Alright, in this video I'm going to talk about double integrals over general regions. So in this case we're going to integrate the function 2y over x squared plus 1. And the region we're going to do this is the set of xy coordinates where x is between 0 and 1 and y is between 0 and square root of x. So the first thing you'll want to do in these problems is to simply sketch this region. Because these are going to come up, help you get your limits of integration. So I usually think about x equals 0 and x equals 1. So basically I pretend they're not less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. So this kind of says x equals 0, this part, this will give me the line x equals 1. I'll do the same thing with the other one. I'll have y equals 0, and then I pretend it's equals y equals square root of x, and then I'll kind of think about the region. So x equals 0 is just a line up and down. x equals 1 is just the line up and down. y equals 0 is just going to correspond to the x-axis. And then y equals square root of x is just going to be our square root function. Okay, so here's y equals square root of x. And so they're talking about the region here bounded by all these curves which would be the stuff inside. Okay. So to set up your limits of integration, it's pretty similar, I think, to if you think about finding areas between curves. You can kind of use some of those same tricks on this stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little arrow up and down. And the reason I do this is um, this helps me come up with my functions and my order of integration. Okay. When I do it up and down, whatever the bottom curve is, notice this bottom line is the line y equals 0. That's going to be my lower limit of integration. And usually you'll just put 0. The top part, that's the curve y equals square root of x. That's going to become my upper limit of integration. To get your outer limits of integration, you just start, it's whatever the first x-coordinate is to whatever the last x-coordinate used is. So we'll have from 0 to 1, and we'll be doing, the again, this function 2y over x squared plus 1. And the order that you do things is very important. So notice I have y equals, y equals, whatever you have first, that's going to be your inside limit of integration. And then I'm going to integrate after that on the outside with respect to x. So this is now the setup for this problem. Maybe we can uh, knock it all out here real quick. So I'm going to put this on another piece of paper here. So it says we have 0. Squeeze it in down here. So it says we have from 0 to square root of x, 0 to 1 of this function, and I'm going to rewrite it a little bit. I'm going to write it as 2 over x squared plus 1 times y. And I'm integrating with respect to y and then with respect to x. So really you just have two integrals that you have to do at once. So I'm kind of looking at this inside part first. And the key thing is we're integrating this with respect to y. So this 2 over x squared plus 1 we're actually just going to treat simply as a constant. So my 0 to 1 is still in there. If I integrate this, well, the 2x squared plus 1 just kind of comes along. And if I integrate y squared, I get y squared over 2. And then I have to evaluate this again. And I like to remind myself I'm plugging in y equals 0 and y equals square root of x. OK, so on this problem, the 2's are going to cancel out. And now I have to just simply plug in my upper limit of integration and my lower limit of integration. So the 0 to 1 is still just waiting out there. So if I plug in the square root of x for y, I'll get the square root of x squared, which is simply x over x squared plus 1. Then I have to plug in my limit of 0, so I'll get 0 squared over x squared plus 1, which is just 0. So really, I've now turned this problem into a, a single integral, namely the integral from 0 to 1 of x over x squared plus 1 dx. OK, 
Okay, and now at this point, you're just kind of back to first semester calculus. How do you integrate this? Well, you can do a u substitution. Let u equal x squared plus 1. You'll get that du is 2x dx, so we're going to need to divide by 2 and get our x dx. And again, when you do a u substitution, your limits of integration change. So if I plug u equals, or excuse me, x equals 0 into the bottom one, I'll get u equals 1. If I plug x equals 1 into the u substitution part, I'll get 1 squared plus 1, which will give me 2. And now I'm simply going to be integrating, well, the stuff on the bottom I'm calling u, x dx is equivalent to 1 half du. And now I've got my integral. Okay, so if I integrate this, the 1 half comes along. Remember the integral of 1 over u is ln of absolute value of u. And again, I have to evaluate this from 1 to 2. Well, this is 1 half ln of 2 minus 1 half natural logarithm of 1. But remember, the natural logarithm of 1 is 0, so this term is gone. And our solution to this problem will simply be 1 half ln of 2. Okay. So let's see if we can't do another one here real fast. I don't know. I may run out of time here. So in this case, we're going to look at the double integral x plus y. So a little bit of a more simple, should be easier integration, I hope. Um, and this is bounded by y equals square root of x and y equals x squared. So again, I have to graph these. Well, if you think about the graph of y equals x squared, that's just a parabola. y equals square root of x, that's just our square root function. And I again like to label as I go. Now to find the point of intersection, you would just set these two things equal to each other. But you can almost just guess that this is going to be the point 1, 1. So again, we're doing this region here in the middle. And I'm going to integrate this with respect to y first. Again, I think in this case it's going to be a little bit easier. So to set up my integral, again, the lower curve that I'm hitting is y equals x squared. The upper curve that I'm hitting is y equals square root of x. And again, my limits of integration, the smallest x-coordinate I use is 0. The largest x-coordinate is 1. And again, the function we were integrating was simply x plus y. I'm doing y first, and then I'm doing x next. Okay, So I'm going to integrate the inside part first. So here's my 0 to 1 just hanging out. Okay, I have to remember I'm integrating with respect to y, so x is just a constant. So I'll simply get x times y plus y squared over 2. And now I have to evaluate this from y equals x squared to y equals square root of x. So this could be a little tedious here. So let's see, this gives me 0 to 1. If I plug in y equals square root of x, I'll get x times square root of x, which will give me x to the 3 halves. If I plug in square root of x, I'll get square root of x squared, which is just x. It's my upper limit of integration. And then I'll have to subtract away the lower limit. If I plug in y equals x squared, I'll get x times x squared, which is x cubed. If I plug y equals x squared in, x squared squared is x to the 4th over 4, and now I have to integrate this with respect to x. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do this in one fell swoop here before I do run out of time. Notice there's no like terms that you can collect here, so we'll just be careful with our signs. If you integrate x to the 3 halves, you'll get x to the 5 halves. You have to divide by 5 halves, which is equivalent to multiplying by 2 fifths. If you integrate x, you'll get x squared over 2. If we multiply by the 2 down there, we'll get, well, x squared over 4. If I integrate x cubed, I'll get x to the 4th over 4. I need to distribute my negative sign, so I'm going to get a minus. If I integrate x to the 4th, I'll get x to the 5th over 4 times 5, which will become a 20. And now I simply have to evaluate this from 0 to 1. At least we have nice limits of integration. If you plug 1 in, you're going to get 2 fifths plus 1 fourth minus 1 fourth minus 1 twentieth. Notice if you plug in the lower limit of integration, you'll simply get 0. So the 1 fourths cancel. We can make this into negative, or we can make this part into 8 over 20. 
by getting common denominators, minus 1 over 20, and it looks like your final solution should be simply 7 over 20. So sorry I stepped through this last one a little quicker. I figure if you're in this class at this point, probably that last little bit of algebra and integration wasn't too, trick too tricky. If you have some other questions, shoot me an email. I'll be happy to answer them. If you want to see some more examples of these, just let me know.